The Metal Gear Solid series is no stranger to dysfunctional families. Sometimes you just gotta duke it out with your brother on top of a nuclear mech. It's what the holidays are all about. Okay, I know Solid and Liquid aren't technically brothers, but they're clones, so I think that still counts. I mean, Liquid calls Solid Snake brother all the time, and they're hardly the only ones who are related. So today, we're going to look at the pedigrees of all our favorite Metal Gear characters. This is the Metal Gear family tree. Each of these characters deserves a timeline in their own right, so we're just gonna focus on their origins and how they came to establish themselves. If you want us to cover individual characters, let us know and subscribe to the leaderboard. The Boss and the Sorrow Okay, we have to kick things off with the woman who started the whole Metal Gear series. The greatest soldier who ever lived, the mother of the special forces, the joy, the boss. She's the daughter of one of the original philosophers, the secret society formed after World War I by some of the greatest minds from the US, Russia, and China. I like to call them the proto-patriots, because that's just what they remind me of. After her father revealed philosopher secrets to her, the other members assassinated him and took her in to be trained in combat and espionage. Yeah, and this all went down when she was still a little kid. By World War II, the boss had already become perhaps the most prolific soldier in the US military. She founded Cobra Unit, a team of elite soldiers consisting of herself, the pain, the end, the fear, the fury, and the sorrow. As the bonds between the team grew, the boss and the sorrow developed an especially intimate relationship. The boss soon became pregnant and ended up going into labor on the beaches of Normandy during D-Day. Like I said, the greatest soldier who ever lived. She took a bullet to the gut, so the birth required an emergency C-section. The baby, Adamska, was successfully delivered on the battlefield, but the philosopher snatched him up right away to use as their pawn. Cobra unit disbanded some time later. Boss returned to America, and the Sorrow returned to his homeland of Russia. Not long after, the philosophers decided to tie up their loose ends. Using their child as leverage, they forced the Boss and the Sorrow to battle to the death. The two met on a bridge and discussed their options, ultimately deciding that the Sorrow had to be the one to die. And so, the boss executed her lover to save the life of their son, who, oblivious to any of this, had been making a name for himself as a soldier, Adamska, aka Revolver Ocelot. The philosophers raised Adamska as a soldier in complete isolation from his parents. There is a bunch of conflicting accounts about his upbringing, but we do know he eventually became a distinguished major in the Soviet GRU forces. During his service, he earned the nickname Ocelot. From there, the philosophers entrusted him with secretly spying on his commanding officer, Colonel Volgan. Okay, so I'm just gonna put this out there. Ocelot is like one of the most storied, detailed characters in the entire Metal Gear series. Like I said, we're not gonna have time to cover everything, but basically he's a secret agent who likes revolvers and torture, especially torture and especially the cult single action army. If you ask Revolver Ocelot, it's the greatest handgun ever made. John, AKA Naked Snake, AKA Big Boss. There's a whole bunch of snakes, but that whole family tree begins with a young man named John. Born in 1935, John joined the military in his youth, where his talents were quickly recognized by the boss. The boss took him under her wing, and the two became extremely close as mentor and student. From there, the boss taught John everything she knew. They even co-developed a new form of martial arts called CQC, close quarters combat. During his military career, John was present at the historic hydrogen bomb test in Bikini Atoll, where the radiation rendered him sterile. After earning a number of accolades in the Green Berets, John was selected for a top secret rescue mission under the CIA's new Fox unit dubbed Virtuous Mission. Under the boss's guidance, John, codenamed Naked Snake for the mission, headed out to rescue Nikolai Sokolov. Colonel Volgan is forcing him to develop Shagohod, a massive tank capable of launching a nuclear weapon. Following an encounter with Major Ocelot, Snake retrieves Sokolov, but the boss intercepts him at the extraction point. In a shocking betrayal, the boss, alongside the reunited members of Cobra Unit, recaptures Sokolov and blasts Snake off of a bridge. After recuperating from his injuries, Snake goes back to the Soviet facility of Groznygrad to eliminate the Cobra Unit, including the boss, destroy the Shagohod, and secure the Philosopher's legacy. It's this microfilm that has $100 billion in it that Volgan stole from the Philosophers. During Operation Snake Eater, Snake joined forces with Eva, a supposed American spy who was secretly working as a triple agent for the Chinese government. After Snake eliminated the Cobras, along with Volgan and Shagohod, all that was left was a final showdown with the boss. She tells Snake that she had never truly betrayed America, that she had been working for the CIA to infiltrate Volgan's ranks and steal the philosopher's legacy. However, when Volgan went rogue and nuked a Soviet facility, the CIA determined that the world could never know of America's involvement. 
As such, the boss continued her revised mission, knowing full well she would die branded a traitor at the hands of her protege. After doing what he had to do, and a quick game of Russian roulette with Ocelot, Snake and Eva make their getaway. By the next morning, however, Eva took off with the Philosopher's Legacy, presumably to China. Too bad the microfilm she stole was a fake, and Ocelot swiped the real one during their final confrontation. Once Snake got back to the US, the president awarded him with a new title, one that surpassed even the boss, the title of Big Boss. Yeah, that's some real Kojima-level uh, naming conventions. <laughs> What's better than the boss? I got it, Big Boss. <laughs> After establishing and leaving the Patriots, Big Boss went on to found a bunch of different PMCs and go on a ton of different missions. There's the Militaire Sans Frontières, the Peace Walker incident, the Ground Zeroes incident, Diamond Dogs, even though that wasn't actually him, it was Venom Snake, it was actually one of his soldiers that was physically altered to look like him and mentally tricked to think he was him. You know what, I really don't feel like opening this whole can of Nana Machines, so let's just move on to his clones. Les Enfants Terribles. Yeah, I took French in high school. With the cash from the Philosopher's Legacy, Ocelot, Big Boss, Major Zero, and a few others create the Patriots to unite the world and honor the boss's last wishes. Big Boss is the figurehead of the organization, but he grew disillusioned with his role as a poster boy. And Zero's world domination he plans didn't help matters either. See, Zero didn't want to lose Big Boss as a symbol, so he spearheaded a project to clone Big Boss without his knowledge, Les Enfants Terribles. Eva volunteered as a surrogate mother, and the Patriots succeeded in creating the Twin Snakes, Eli and David one with Big Boss's dominant traits, and one with his recessive traits. With the dominant genes, Eli was considered to be the superior clone, which is not how dominant and recessive genes work, but whatever, I'm not gonna ask you to pull out your Punnett squares like this is seventh grade science class. Point is, when Big Boss learned of the project, he was furious and abandoned the Patriots for good. David and Eli were raised separately. David was raised in America, joined the armed forces at an early age, and demonstrated superior military prowess, and eventually earned the codename Solid Snake. Meanwhile, Eli was raised by the Patriots in England. While on assignment to Africa, he escaped and became the leader of a platoon of child soldiers. Things went even further south after his encounter with Venom Snake, who we thought was Big Boss, but again, I'm not getting into it. Point is, Eli grew to hate Big Boss. He believed that Big Boss had determined that he was the inferior clone and abandoned him, so he swore revenge against his father. As he he grew up, he became envious of Solid Snake's accomplishments and started going under the name Liquid Snake. In reality, Liquid was the superior clone, but was nonetheless defeated by his inferior brother at the end of the Shadow Moses incident. After succumbing to Fox Die, Liquid's arm was grafted onto Revolver Ocelot, and Liquid's consciousness would take over from time to time. Uh, yeah, Liquid Ocelot was a thing for a little while. Anyway, sometime after the birth of the twins, a third clone was created, this time without modified dominant and recessive genes. The Patriots would tout this child as the perfect clone, the ultimate recreation of Big Boss. This boy, named Solidus, was raised by the Patriots, and as their sphere of influence grew, he was groomed to become the President of the United States. And so, he furthered the Patriots' agenda from within the Oval Office as President George Sears, forming the counter-terrorist group Dead Cell. He and Dead Cell would eventually rebel against the Patriots as the Sons of Liberty during the Big Shell incident. Even though the Patriots planned the whole thing and Arsenal Gear... Look, it's another can of nano machines. I'm not gonna get into. We made two different timelines on Metal Gear, so if you're interested, go check those out. Huey and Doctor Strangelove so, it seems like the Emmerich family has nuclear destruction written into their DNA. Otacon's grandfather worked on the Manhattan Project, and his dad, Huey, was even born the day of the Hiroshima bombing. Working for... Uh, hot Coldman, Huey Emmerich went on to develop the Peace Walker, a bipedal artificial intelligence capable of starting a nuclear war. Once Huey realized the destruction his work would bring, he vowed to leave. Big Boss offered him the chance to atone for his sins by joining the MSF, and Huey gratefully accepted. Huey went on to help Big Boss by giving him invaluable information on Coldman's lead AI scientist, Dr. Strangelove. Strangelove was a brilliant scientist, and had actually worked alongside Huey in the Mercury Project, a top-secret NASA operation to launch the first woman into space. That woman was none other than the boss. During their time together, Strangelove fell in love with the boss, and after her death in Operation Snake Eater, she grew to despise Big Boss and vowed to bring the boss back to life. Strangelove joined Hot Coldman, modeling the Peace Walker's AI after the boss herself with the intention of learning the truth about her death. After capturing Big Boss and unsuccessfully interrogating him about whether the boss had truly betrayed America, she finally got the closure she needed. The boss AI inside the Peace Walker sacrificed itself by submerging itself in a lake in order to prevent a nuclear catastrophe. Strangelove realized that the boss's intentions had always been good and joined up with the MSF. 
Strangelove eventually left the MSF in order to pursue more AI research. When Huey betrayed the MSF by allowing the paramilitary group XOF to attack Mother Base, he was captured by their leader, Skullface. Skullface made Huey work on another superweapon, a giant walking mech known as Sahalanthropus, using the boss's recovered AI pod. Strangelove eventually ended up also being taken by the XOF and reunited with Huey to help develop the weapon. The two eventually began an intimate relationship, although it's possible she was just trying to spend time with the boss's AI. Either way, she soon became pregnant and had a son, Hal. But when Huey began to use Hal as a guinea pig pilot for Sahalanthropus, the two got into a heated argument. To keep Hal safe, Strangelove secretly sent him away to America. When Huey found out, he was furious. He locked Strangelove inside the boss's AI pod and left her there to die. Years later, Venom Snake would rescue Huey from XOF and recruit him into the Diamond Dogs. Nobody trusted Huey, especially after he betrayed the MSF, and their guts were right. Even though Huey helped out and killed Skullface, he started experimenting on the Diamond Dogs with a deadly virus. From there, he was sent into exile, presumably returning to America to find Hal. He would later marry a woman who had her own daughter, Emma, and the four lived together as one happy family until Hal started having an affair with his stepmom. Once Huey found out about that, he drowned himself in their pool and even attempted to take his stepdaughter Emma with him, but Hal was able to rescue her. This whole incident deeply traumatized Hal, but he would still go on to become a prolific scientist, developing Metal Gear Rex and eventually becoming Solid Snake's best friend, Otacon. So yeah, if you thought your family was dysfunctional, just be happy you're not Otacon. I can only imagine what holidays at the Emmerich house are like. And you know what, Christmas with the snakes must be pretty awkward too. What would you even get Snake for the holidays? I'd get him like an ugly Christmas sweater version of a cardboard box. Anyway, I've been your host Dan, and be sure to subscribe to the leaderboard. All players are welcome, even clones.